hello it's a rather sweaty rob here i'm sorry and that's not a very pleasant picture is it um it's very warm um this is episode what 117 are we on 117 or 118 i can't remember now um i should always check these before i i, I start the show i think it's 117 anyway if i'm wrong sue me um welcome to the show we're live again uh it's a little bit later than normal if you're watching live apologies um we were just waiting for somebody to turn up you know he's probably taking his <coughs> afternoon nap i'll give you three guesses to who that might be <laughs> um so um welcome to the show uh, we've got a brilliant guest for you today um fantastic guest can't wait to introduce you to her um we'll do that in just a moment before we do of course we'll we just get through that the housekeeping bits um so first of all um if you wouldn't mind if you do like the video, if you do like the show, then tell us by hitting that button underneath the video. Um, if you want to comment, you can do so in the chat, which is on the right-hand side of your screen if you're watching on YouTube or underneath the video if you're watching on Facebook. I think most people are on YouTube. Uh, of course, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, why not? <laughs> Rectify that now by pressing the subscribe button and then hitting that bell next to it to make sure you get uh, notified of every time we put something up on, on the stream, which is usually every Friday. Uh, evening at 7 p.m uk and of course if you like what we do and you think there's other people that might like us as well then of course then share the link um and share the channel around that would be fantastic um as always um we are funded completely by our audience uh, we love you for doing so and uh if you want to carry on donating to us then yeah by all means please do you can do so in a number of ways the first uh, simple way is to use our paypal account you can just donate through that um, you can do a one-off or you can set up a recurring payment, which uh, I know a lot of people like to do. So um, that's where you can do that. Of course, you can also hit um, the Super Chat or Super Stickers function underneath the, uh, the chat window in YouTube. And that allows you to donate through the chat. Um, and if you're watching on Catch Up, so after the show, there's probably around there somewhere underneath there's a button that says thanks with a little heart next to it and it works exactly the same you can donate some money that way uh, and all funds that are donated go straight into keeping the channel on the air and uh, you know, maintaining the running costs so thank you ever so much for everybody that has donated in the past and may donate in the future if you want to keep up with us on social media of course we are across all of those twitter uh, instagram uh, facebook of course and here on youtube and the handle is across all formats at ProSynth Network. If you have a question for us or for our guest today, could you help us um, identify those in the chat? Because you know you guys just go on and on and on. So if you could put a nice big capital Q in front of your question, that just kind of helps those of us with dodgy eyesight. Um, I've just realized I haven't got my glasses and that's why I was looking a bit fuzzy on the screen. I thought my <laughs> bandwidth was going down. Um, so I'll put those on later. Uh, yeah, so stick a Q in front of it and then we can uh, put those into the relevant bucket and we can come to those. Right, that's all the housekeeping, boring stuff out of the way. Thanks for putting up with that. Hello to everybody that's in the chat room. And uh, we've, we've had a donation already. I'm just trying to find who that is and stick it up on there. Uh, who, who was that that donated some money? Uh, oh, there you it go, was... Mr. Andrew Brooks. Oh. Before, yeah, before Andrew Brooks. So, yeah, I'll tell you the story about Andrew Brooks and breaking ship um, a little bit later on. But thank you, Andrew. Uh, much appreciated for that. Um, thank you to everyone else. Uh, if I've missed you any uh, any donations, I do apologize. Uh, kick me up the backside if you need to to remind me. Right. Let's meet our, uh, our usual crew, my uh, worthy co-hosts. Uh, first of all, we go up to the north of England. Um, we go and see Ben Simpson. Ben, how are you? You've not been wonderfully well again this week. What's going on? Oh, man. I've had toothache this week. That's been the problem. Uh, it's been really horrendous, the pain. So I've been to the emergency yeah. dentist today and I've had a tooth removed. As you can see, my mouth's a little bit weird. It looks... <laughs> You can really <laughs> tell. <laughs> Drooped on one side more than usual. And uh, I'm just a little bit numb still around the mouth area, so I might be a bit you slurred in my might words. Be a bit <laughs> slurred in my words a bit more than usual, yeah. <laughs> uh, other than that, though, are you well? Well. Been busy? I, I feel I've got a bit of a con confession to make. I feel a uh -oh. bit like the naughty schoolboy, you know, with the the homework excuses. You know, the dog at it. Yeah. Well, regarding <laughs> regarding tonight's show. Yeah. It uh, a cat of mine got locked into my studio. No. And overnight, 
and I'd left everything on because I intended on coming back but fell asleep. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the cat was in here overnight and adjusted things in, on its <laughs> travels. Now, th I swear to God, this is true. I, I put the SEM <laughs> on before, the GeForce SEM. Oh, yes. And I, I played something and I thought, whoa, that doesn't sound right. That, it sounded really kind of tinny and thin. I thought, well, maybe it's a, like a, like some sort of high pass on this this sound. So I went through some others, and they all sounded the same. Uh, not the same, but, you know, they all sounded as though they'd been put through a high pass filter. Uh -huh. So I thought, something's wrong here. So I had a look at my desk, and everything had been changed. <laughs> so I recalled, <laughs> I recalled a preset that it was, like, called Ben Studio 2019 or something like that. I thought, that'll be fine, that. I put that on, and now I can't hear anything. It's like nothing <laughs> is coming out of anywhere, and I don't know why. It, it's all the cat's fault. So I've not been able to try anything. It's going to be one of the weirdest review shows of all time, but I'm up for it. And so I've had my tooth out. I'm feeling a bit off my head. Half me, half me face is drooping. <laughs> I haven't reviewed anything, and I'm going to try and do my bit on the show tonight. I oh. think it's, it's going to be an entertaining one. I don't think Kent's... I'd go a vote either. I don't know. Well, I know, pro professionalism is is our is it is our middle name. Um, yeah. Clearly, uh, <laughs> this is going to be fun. I'll give you that. It's going to be fun. Um, great to have you on as always, sir. Um, let's. Can we do any better with Mister Spong? <laughs> no, I'm He's kidding. I'm kidding. He's a sod. Sorry, sorry. It's just that everybody was thirsty. They needed a drink. Yeah. <laughs> so, How are you? Uh, okay now, thank you. Yeah, yeah good. <laughs> good to see you back on air last night. Yes, yeah, that was. Um, it was oh, there was a lot of love coming out. It was like wow, yeah, wow, absolutely. You see, yeah, yeah. people do love you. Mm. And I c completely regret having to go to bed at like half past two in the morning again. <laughs> Felt it this morning, but there you go. Yeah, I like the way you go. Oh, let's wrap it up now, and then an hour and a half later, blah 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 blah. Yeah, blah blah yeah, blah blah. Uh, Blah, blah, blah. I did that with um, with Ty on the phone this afternoon. It was mm. like, right, okay, then, yeah, lovely. I'll see you too. And um, oh yeah, and this, and then pff, half an hour later, we're on there. Yeah, it's just on and on. Anyway, good to see you, mate. Anything Thank new you? in your world, or you're just you're just kind of ramping up slowly from? Um, there is two companies that I'm going to be phoning up on Monday. Yes, and every other word will be an expletive. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> A very very long story and it's okay. but penultimately not good so i've got that to look forward to but uh, no okay. i've just erected a uh, swimming pool oh erections for Sorry. the dog <laughs> so i've got a 12 foot swimming pool for the dogs nice oh yeah. nice yeah. So. no i don't think we ever had one of those uh, swimming pools at our place mm. couldn't couldn't be doing with it anyway um mm. ken thank you for joining <laughs> um at last, eventually. And um, let's go to our guest. because We've been keeping her waiting far, far too long. Um, you you may not know this name, but you certainly will after the end of this show. Um, we are joined today all the way from the United States of America. We'll find out exactly where in just a little while. By the wonderful Christine Anderson. Hey. Hey. Let's yeah, round of applause. There we go. <laughs> How are you, Christine? Hey, pretty good. Good. Where, whereabouts do we find you today? Oregon, Southern Oregon, Oregon right above the California border. Oh, right. So that far up north. It's not that far up north. Well, I suppose. Well, yeah. yeah. I, I'm just Northern think. Oregon gets more cold. We have like nice summers. It's hot mm. outside right now. But so, none of that California tax. <laughs> yeah, true, true. So is this your little, um, like, your music room that we find you in today? This is where you do most of your stuff? Yes. This is, this is my new studio. This is Magic Power Studios 2.0. Okay. Mm. Magic Power Studios 1.0 burned up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, you, I remember you mentioned. So this was in, like, a wildfire, wasn't it? Yeah, the Oregon 2020 wildfires. No way. Like, I went to take my kids to the oh, dentist. Man. It was like 
wind was blowing and everything, kind of like the kind of wind where Mary Poppins would fly through the <laughs> And I'm like, this is really cool. I really love this weather. We do their dentist appointment. I start driving home and I see this like little black thing, like a tiny little line off in the horizon. I'm like, oh, that's strange. You know, what is that? And then <laughs> as I'm getting closer to home, it's getting bigger. And I'm like, wow, hey, there's a fire. Look, girls, there's a fire. Isn't this cool? You know, there's a fire over there. That's what a fire looks like. <laughs> no. Like, imagine as I'm getting even closer, I realize it's fucking my house. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. It's really not funny. But like we were on the this freeway going south and my exit's right there. And I lived like right off the exit. You could see, <laughs> you could see where I lived. No. And the fire comes up over the hill i mean it was like a movie and the, the car that had filled with smoke everybody stopped on the freeway we couldn't turn around it was just wow. bam it was super scary and i guess that that day um almost three pounds burned down no. like ashland part of ashland burned but then uh talent and phoenix burned and they couldn't stop it it was it was huge. It went on for like days. Everybody yeah. was just like not sure what was going to happen. And the next day, I was like, "Well, first I was like, wait, did my house really burn or not? You know, because, <laughs> ah, really, really good luck." And of course, I'm thinking like my studio, all my work, you know, yeah, is in there. Yeah. God wouldn't do that to me. Everything's going to be fucked. <laughs> so the next day, I mean, I got in my car and drove with my mom straight down the freeway and i wasn't sure like you know if my house really burned i mean i saw all these other charred remains like sad old men like kicking bricks on the side of the road <laughs> smoke still going up and i'm like well maybe that's what burned you know maybe my studio is still there and so we pull off and i'm like um I think we made our own turn. My mom's like, no, this was your house. No. Oh, no. no. So it, it was really shock at the time. And I'm like, OK, I'm going to go dig through the rubble because my hard drives are going to be there. I mean, my TX7 is going to be there. My Judo 60, all my analog solutions are going to be there, you know, because I have good luck. And? <laughs> so through the rubble there with effing nothing oh. i mean my i'm talking bathtubs burned up refrigerators like the entire burger king by my house which was made of bricks completely was just raised to the oh. ground and so i was like well f <laughs> oh. so that was really sad i didn't have any home to go to i didn't have like any music and my instruments were gone and the worst part though is like you would think that i had all of my work backed up you would think <laughs> and especially things that have happened to me in the past the first time i made a home album i was like really close to being done with it and then i had a fatal hard disk error i'm like oh shit, i'm never gonna make this mistake again i'm gonna do it over it's going to be better and I'm going to get a backup drive. So I built a new computer with a backup drive in there. And in fact, it wasn't just one backup drive. I had a chain of backup drives. <laughs> oh, my goodness, it's going to be great. And then in 2018, <laughs> I, I got struck by lightning at my studio, not in the way that it burned up, but it shocked all of my gear and it like no. burned up all of my everything that was plugged in fortunately not everything was plugged in but you know that's when i first learned that uh insurance is really important and i'm yeah. glad that i had it <laughs> so wow. yeah, i was like okay this is you know never going to happen again next time when i back things up i'm going to put them on hard drives and stash them around the house so if something weird happens then they're going to be there so now I, I have a cloud now. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Now there's gonna be a pole awesome. shift because <laughs> it's great to have Christine Lucky Anderson on the show. <laughs> wow. Wow. So note note to self, never invite Christine round to my house. 
because we'll get struck by lightning. Oh, do you know it must that be the most awful mad. thing to realise yeah. as you you know yeah you know, as you get closer to your house that that smoke is actually your house. Um, mm. Oh yeah. You know, I've, you, I, I think we've all you know, maybe you know driven home at one point and seen a plume of smoke uh, over in the distance where where maybe our village or town might be, and you think, I do hope that's not mine. And then you get home, you, it's clearly not yours, and you're fine. But to actually have that and realise, oh my god, and yeah, I mean, let alone you, you. There's so many houses yeah. burned down, and there were actually a few fires happening um, concurrently. The one that burned me down was the Almeida fire, and mm -hmm. there was like a 53-ish hundred families that were that's wow. a lot, that were displaced because of the fire that was down where we were and the one that was up north also but they were evacuating right so i mean the wind was blowing so fast it wasn't like actually hurricane winds but 55 miles an hour is really fast when it's blowing <laughs> smoke yeah. and everything's dry and so uh, everyone was evacuating by the time they realized you know southern oregon's on fire and where do we go north to the next town over and it starts burning that and then they get no. evacuation and we go so i wound up at my mom's house then we got evacuated from there to my sister's house we got evacuated from there and it's not just me but you know all these other people yeah. and it was impossible to drive anywhere it was like you know independence day when the, <laughs> the when the, yeah the ship's coming down and people are like <laughs> i gotta get out of town but nobody knew where to go it was really crazy and yeah. so like i guess i learned what shock we use the phrase shock <laughs> but, like, i guess i learned i learned what actual shock is yeah. and it's almost like you're white of emotion yeah. it's you you're in some other kind of just like robotic uh mode of being and i actually did not have emotions for a while i didn't mm -hmm. Even when I started yeah. feeling my personality coming back, it was like not me because I just felt like I had, you know, lost everything. And how could this possibly be? But uh, then I got my fire insurance payout. <laughs> Yay. Well, <laughs> so, there you go. Yeah. We, so we start over slowly. And I have a nice house. My house is cooler now than the one before, but mm. I had a lot of really cool gear. And yeah. things that I, you know, am not going to probably ever totally replace in my lifetime. I mean, maybe I will. Mm -hmm. But um, I do have some really cool synthesizers coming my way, if nice. you know what I mean, mm. from a certain collection. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yes, absolutely. Listen, Christy, that's that's such a, uh, a crazy, crazy story. And I think a lesson in not only get insurance for your shit because that's important um but in a, a lesson in you know going through all that and coming out the other side as positive as you seem to be today uh and and yeah so credit to you and well done and i'm glad to see you've got yourself back in a happy space and of course to top it all off i mean if things couldn't get any worse you met mark doty <laughs> Yeah, yes. oh, no. I've met my oh, man. Oh, wow. wow, it's getting so bad. <laughs> <laughs> we know we love him. we love him. And, and Mark, of course, is in the chat. Um, so we will be taking the Mickey out of him because we don't get an opportunity that often. It's been a while since he was on. Um, I know but, he has a lot of fans, but nobody yeah. loves it as much as I do. <laughs> oh well, no, I don't doubt that for a second. I don't doubt that at all. Um, listen, um, that's a, a, an inspiring, a tragic but inspiring story. Uh, maybe we'll delve into that a little bit further um, when we kind of we'll, we'll talk to you in, in a bit more detail about you yourself as a musician, what you do, how you do it. The, you know, talk about the music and everything. And um, we'll do that in just a little while. But there has been a few news topics, so our, our, our audience do like us to just to cover a few little things. Um, and let's see, what shall we go to first of all? I think there's not, there really hasn't been a, an awful lot. Uh, so this is going to be a fairly short thing, which is no, <laughs> no bad thing because we get more time with Christine. Um, so this is a new thing, a new thing. It's a new reverb, shall we say, from um, the Swedish Soft Tube Company. Uh, and it's called Wasted Space. And it's it's just kind of a really kind of 
uh, I don't know, uh, sort of, it's a retro reverb that's kind of like a um, a lexicon, what is it, the 480, isn't it? Mm. It looks it has a little bit of that about it. And it's just really sort of like rough around the edges, um, no messing, none of this uh, sparkly, shimmery shit that you get going on nowadays. It's just good old-fashioned reverb, and it's uh, normally 59 bucks. Uh, it's currently on offer at 35 um did anybody get a chance to have a play with this i didn't download it ben obviously you didn't i'm, I'm guessing kent you did or didn't no notes no no oh because you didn't get the email did you oh this is gonna be a really quick show this is <laughs> well i, I, I did what, I, oh, yeah, sorry no sorry ben I, I was gonna say i did watch the videos uh, and uh before i completely lost all sound in my studio <laughs> it was <laughs> it was sounding pretty good it, it's it's got a lot of character to it. Um, I'm sure mm. that'll come across it in the demo. Like, but I think it's interesting. I mean, the the thing with things like this is sometimes I do wonder: could you not do this to the reverb yourself? That's my only criticism of it. Mm. You know, could you could you have any reverb on a on an auxiliary and then mangle that? So it sounds like this. I suppose it's a convenience yeah. of not having to do that, but I, I like doing things like that. So I, I don't know. Um, you remember the old camel audio? There was like camel yeah. space and camel fat. I loved those things because mm. it was like a really lo-fi. Um, now they got rid of that, and so then they just started bouncing you to these um, plugins and Logic to try to recreate it. Now, yeah. obviously, totally different type of plugin here, but it had that same like lo-fi kind of you know dirty sound that I loved about um, mm. Camel Fat and Camel Space. Yeah, D didn't um, Apple buy Camel? I think Did, Camel that's probably why they bounced yeah. you back to the Logic plugins. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. because yeah. it did not sound the same. So, no, you know, no. when you, you do a track and you know exactly how it yeah. sounds. And mm. then it, you know, flips over and all of a sudden we do not have camel space anymore, but we have put <laughs> in this and the settings should sound pretty close. No, it didn't. No. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people yeah. got upset about camel audio, uh, but yeah, you know, or uh, upset at Apple buying camel audio because they knew yeah, inevitably. They, they it, did not make it the same. Yeah. They just really didn't. No, it's a shame. And I think, uh, what was the instrument that they had that everybody loves? I've, I've got it. Uh, Alchemy, that's it. Mm. Um, that got built into Logic eventually, didn't it? So all these people that had Alchemy, um, if you wanted to carry on having it, you had to go down the Apple route, which is a little bit, uh, little bit naughty. But no, I've got, um, what, I've got something very similar to this. And I'm trying to remember the manufacturer. Um, it, but it's something something 480 and it's a very similar sort of thing and it, when i listened to this it was just that, that kind of you know kind of crappy reverb that isn't you know is it, it's not glossy and shiny like all of the ones that we get today it's just kind of good old-fashioned vintage verb and um yeah i mean it's 35 euros it's uh let's have a listen to the demo this this uh this is uh some drum uh, examples going through this let's just put this on here Get the volume up as well. Wow. <laughs> there we go. Something about that shitty verb that I do like. Listen to one more. And there you go. So you kind of get the idea. This is, you know, it, it's it doesn't finesse anything. It's just some of the of... there's some synth examples next. I don't mm. know if you could stick some of them on because they sound really nice. I thought I thought they were better than the drums. Uh, I don't know I don't how know. you'd do that. Sorry. Just try, no, yeah, you throwing you under the bus there, whatever. It's Thank called. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here you go. Is that uh, Lo-Fi synth reverb? This one with the Model Eighty Two. Yeah, it's quite. I
not bad that. Yeah. Sounds it sounds nice though. On yeah, the, on the yeah, center, it's quite nice that. And yeah, yeah. For thirty five. I'm just trying to remember who makes that one that I use. That's very very similar to that. And I got it for. I think I got it free, or it was like a stupid uh, price. They wanted you to buy that and then upgrade to like the full version of the, their four eighty. Somebody oh, will post that in the chat. Yeah. Do you remember? I've got that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've got that. I like that. Mm, yeah. Do you like crappy cool. reverbs, Christine? Are you into crappy <laughs> reverbs? You know, sometimes you need a really crappy reverb. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. What? What do you, do you do? You prefer software effects or hardware effects, or maybe a bit of both? Well, I mean, all my hardware burned up, so I prefer <laughs> software effects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just like when I first started recording, I came to music as a pianist, mm -hmm. and I knew how to play the piano. That's all I knew how to do. So I started multi-tracking and mm -hmm. then, you know, going through picking different instruments and I used whatever was built into logic at mm -hmm. the time. And because I have OCD among other things, <laughs> I wanted to try every single possible plugin. Now these were all the clock plugins at the time, but there was a lot. And so I was putting every plugin in and then like dragging them up or down, seeing where in the chain they did what. And I actually learned everything I know about <laughs> recording from doing that. Yeah. And oh, I, I remember when, um, when I started actually listening to sound, instead of seeing you know the music is like this overall feeling and what the words say and all that mm. i started like listening to which we all you know this is what we're all about is like the sound but i had to evolve into the place where i was listening to the sound and i'll never forget when i realized that my sound sucked and i'm like <laughs> why, why, why does my sound suck what am i doing wrong and then i then began the journey of trying you know, different instruments and getting yeah. you know, new plugins. I use Waves plugins now, but boy, I mean, it's been it's been a journey. So you're you're into the whole Waves thing, are you? You that yeah. You know what happened is I, when I was setting everything up, I wanted some nice plugins, and they were so expensive. And then a friend of mine was like, "Oh, hey, here's the hack version of Waves. This is like twenty thousand dollars worth of plugins." I'm like, "Oh, cool." <laughs> and you know, what? every time my computer got you know, struck by lightning or whatever yeah. it was, I would get the, you know, updated crap version. And then anyway, now I actually paid the money. <laughs> <laughs> and so now I have the, the waves that I like, and there's so many of them. There's some that I think are just like super redundant and it's just not what I use, mm -hmm. but I have, I have found that I can get the sound that I want with the combination of waves, plugins, and just some logic stuff. Cool. Very well, cool whatever works i mean i i found since since getting logic because i i kind of moved to logic a couple of years ago um i found myself just going to their stock stuff far more than i do to all these other plugins because it just yeah, they have good, it's that whole apple thing it kind of just works doesn't it i use their yeah. reverb or not their reverb i use their eq all the time like i'll yeah. use their EQ before i will use waves unless i really want a really smooth shimmery like mm that kind of really hi-fi sound that I'll make sure I have a Waves plug-in, you know, at the end of my chain. Sure. Otherwise, it's a little more dull around the edges, and it's, like, very mm. noticeable, but sometimes that's what I want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, there you go. So that's um, SoftTube, Wasted Space. Uh, it's 35 uh, it says 35 euros, so I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be around 35 bucks, 35 pounds, because they're all kind of... I was looking at the exchange rates today, actually. It's sort of like one... I think you can get a dollar for about a pound eighteen at the moment, and a euro for about a pound twelve or something. It's um, it's not, or is it the other way around? I can't remember. Anyway, it's not very good. Uh, at the moment, <laughs> no, it's, it's a not. bit, it's a bit <laughs> rubbish. But there you go. So um, yeah, there you go. Soft tube, wasted space. Okay, so this next one did get me very um, moist about the gusset, as I am wont to say. Um, so this comes hand in hand. Yeah, I really should show a bit more respect here. Um, so <laughs> yeah, you think you think. Um, so in celebration of Mr. Tom Oberheim's birthday. Um, our friends at GeForce have released a, a new instrument, which is a kind of derivative of something they've done earlier on. So um, you remember, we absolutely love 
GeForce's um, Oberheim OBE plugin, which is all over our intro music and our outro music, and um, I'm hearing it in so many places. Now they've taken one of those eight SEMs and they've made it as a single standalone plugin um, with all of the, the wonderful uh, controls that you get with that and that just wonderful sound. It's a beautiful tone uh, from a piece of software that sounds it just... It is, it sounds yeah. so good. Yeah, it is, it's amazing. And you can buy this now for, I think it's on offer at $29.99. Uh, but if you own OBE, they will automatically deduct another 10 bucks or 10 pounds from that. So it's $19.99. Then you, sales tax goes on top of that. So it's a, I got it for 24, I think it was. Um, and full price, it's only 49.99 when it goes back to full price. And one of the great things about this we'll talk about in just a minute is you can program stuff on the the SEM. And if you really like that and you want to use it in OBE, you can export it to it and it just works in OBE. And then you can then mess around with eight instances of it and do all the wonderful things that the eight voice can do. But let's have a listen to the, the demo because um, if there's one other thing that GeForce do well, other than making great software instruments, is they do great uh, adverts and demo videos. I almost don't want to stop it, but we're just wasting time. But it is, it's lovely. Um, and they've got a whole bunch of videos, uh, not just um, this one, but there's a whole bunch of other demos in different styles. And there's some uh, some nice tuition videos with Dave Sultry Tones uh, in the background. Thank you for the camera switch. I missed that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And it is available now if you go to g4software.com and you can order it from there. As I said before, you are... Um, automatically discounted 10 quid 10 bucks 10 whatever um, you like to trade in um, if you already own the um, the OBE um, which of course is a fantastic instrument there it is in all its glory what, what I really did like about this um, is that when you expand it you get both the front and this rear panel this this VCO3 which of course wasn't on the original SEM but has got the blessing and approval of Mr. Tom Oberheim himself, because that was another thing that, of course, um, GeForce benefited from very recently, was getting that endorsement from the, the great man himself. So, come on then, any uh, any thoughts on this, Christine? Have you you, have you had to play with this? Have you got oh, this? Did yeah, you... I just, I listened to it yesterday, and mm -hmm. I actually almost bought it <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I was like sitting right there, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to get anything done if I start doing that right now. But I actually, I am going to buy it. I love it. I told Mark Doty, I'm like, Mark Doty, have you heard this? It sounds really good. And he's like, oh, yeah, they actually make really, really good virtual mm. instruments. So... Yeah, absolutely, I was yeah. impressed. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, and I just played the new Overheim too, like the one. It yeah. Nam. I met Tom. I played it, and, and it was like you, you met know, him. Sound that fit, yeah, that like big fat sound, yeah. and mm -hmm. that the software instrument captures the character of that, yeah. and I thought they did a great job. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I had to go on the OBX8 uh, last weekend myself uh, here in the UK, and it is. <sighs> It, yeah my wallet was you know shuddering because you know i really really want one but i just can't afford it at the moment but the other thing is that when you play it and you use it at no point certainly at no point did i think that five thousand dollars was too much money for this thing because it's, it's exquisite in both sound and, and design um ben i know you said you've not downloaded anything but have you got I, any I, thoughts on this 
Oh no, I, I did download. Oh, it. you did? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I haven't even heard it, and I bought it because <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know how good it's going to be. So, and I, I did I, in a chat between ourselves through the week. I, I did say like, can you not get the same result by you know just using one sem on the, mm-hmm. on the OBE? But it, it's a this is a, a streamlined, specialised version of it, isn't it? You know, it's not using all them resources. You're getting the same sound. You could have mo- many more instances, I suppose, of this running. And I'm quite excited about it. When I finally get this up and running again, I'll probably be having a go at that straight away. Um, mm. I got it for 24. Uh, yeah, same here, yeah. 24 quid, which is, is great, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah um, yeah, it's a, it's a brilliant... It's endorsed by Tom. Happy belated birthday to Tom, by the way. 86. 86, wow. yeah. Um, amazing contribution to the music tech world. Um, just one of the, the all-time greats. Mm, and yeah. great that he's still involved producing stuff like the uh-huh. OB X8, uh, yeah. which is, by all accounts, a, a, a fantastic instrument. And it certainly is. I wish I could get one myself. I might yeah. sell a load of stuff and get one, actually. I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> Starting with the cat. <laughs> yeah. Get rid yeah. of the cat. Get rid of the cat. <laughs> Make up but, some kind of pre- pedigree documentation and say, yeah, you, know, you can trace yeah. her, her lineage back to Cleopatra yeah. or something like that. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah you, pure, you, pure you'll, yeah. yeah, you'll get five grand for that. Um, Kent, I know you've had, you've been probably playing with this uh, probably a bit before the rest of us. Thoughts mm. on this? Yeah, it's lovely. It yeah. is lovely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. you've got... When I came to see you last, you got uh, a SEM. It, was, it the, was it an original SEM or was it one of the newer ones? Or What was it you got that was SEM-shaped that was in, in your front room amongst all the other things that were in your front room? Oh, can you be more precise? There's always SEMs no. in the front room. I remember, <laughs> I remember you seeing remember it. it. I remember seeing a set. It was on top of an eight voice. You had an eight yeah, voice. That's it. I mean, this up. this is oh, Kent's front uh, room, uh, everyone. And then there was a yeah. <laughs> there was a sem module on. Yeah, top. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was a uh, eight voice number. Oh God, twelve or something. Yeah, but th- there's a there's a stacker box uh, out in the shed that's full of sems as well. Oh, okay. Um, it's always good to have a few sems knocking around because you, know, you never know. So I'm told, yeah. Yeah, we need to, need to pop open a door on a warm day. But, I mean, I'm sure With you a must. Sem under it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a quite a stylish thing, isn't it? A sem. Yeah. It's quite a, yeah, it's, it looks like. Oh, yeah. I mean, you must have had a, quite a bit of experience with the hardware. So, mm. I mean, obviously OBE was pretty on the nose. This must be as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think because of. Um, because of that, I mean, although Dave had the had, has his eight voice, um, which I, you know, it obviously was modelled on his one, um, and we were talking. We go, you did calibrate it, right? Didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah, it will sound like an eight voice really fish. So um, yeah, so it's always the same sort of thing. But uh, yeah, but I, I, yeah, but I mean, I've, I've known about it for ages, and you know me, I'm an NDA nightmare. I'm going. Oh, no, I better not say anything. <laughs> oh, no, shh, shh, oh, oh, I'll tell you what is coming out. Oh, no, 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 actually, no, forget I said that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's gorgeous. And I like it. I like the single one because I know that there's the argument of go, why would you buy the standalone SEM if, mm-hmm. you, have, if you have access to the um, OBE? Yeah. Um, OBE, sorry. OBE. Um, and it... I think what it is, uh, when you start using it, when you use the single one, suddenly you automatically bring in a different discipline Yes. when you're programming it than when you, you're doing the eight. Because mm-hmm. you're thinking, you're kind of thinking ahead, you know. Whereas when you just got the one, you sit down, you just, and it, you start noticing nuance and you get in there and really sort of like start to program. Um, mm. And then the beautiful thing, like, we, like I said on the show last night, where mm-hmm. you just go, yeah, I really like that patch, straight into OBE, and have it poly. But yeah. that's the whole point of it being mono, is you can do all your key fluttering, all the stuff that you can do on a mono that you can't do on a, on a poly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah sure. So um, my advice is you buy both. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, there was a question, and uh, Joseph in, in the chat asked the question, SEM or OBE? He was about to purchase OBE, then you saw the SEM. I mean, like you say, I would certainly say, well, well buy both. Buy the uh, OBE first, and then you'll get the, uh, the SEM at a discounted rate anyway. Mm. But like you say, it's all about the discipline, isn't it, of... With with the eight voice, the OBE, you've you've got all of that stuff in front of you, and you're tempted to just go and start messing around with everything. Whereas yeah. this focuses the mind onto that one thing, get that right, and then throw that into OBE and start messing around with it in a polyphonic manner. Yeah, and, um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, definitely yeah. get both for mm. sure. Um, so yeah, that's uh, G Four Software OBM or the Oberheim SEM. Um, it's worth mentioning actually let me just bring this back up onto the screen um, so it's worth mentioning that um, with this you get um, let me just so I'm just my, ah, what are you doing everything's a little bit on the hurt tonight um, so why are you not going across it's so, Christine uh, yeah uh, it's just it's the, it's the Christine curse. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to swipe it because it, what got it is seconds it, before you get struck by lightning. You know, you know, yeah, you know how much I hate the Moog website because of that um, sideways scrolling stuff that they have going. Yeah. Well, this is slightly uh, the GeForce software one goes up and down, but it also goes side to side. And if you start swiping, it just goes a little bit haywire. So uh, hopefully you can see here. So you've got the SEM, uh, this main area on the left here where it says Oberheim SEM. That's the main kind of front panel. That's pretty much like for like to the original hardware. Then on the back of it, they call it the rear panel. They've added this extra VCO, VCO3, which you can use for all sorts of things. It's got the LFO, um, mass, uh, velocity filter tracking, and aftertouch. But then on either side of those, uh, you've got this lovely arpeggiator, and then on the right, you've got this delay and reverb, which is a very simple um, and, dare I say, basic uh, delay and reverb, but a really, really nice sounding delay and reverb, very musical. So um, really just, just very simple to use. I mean, that's the other thing. It's such a simple thing to use. Um, and that was one thing that struck me about the... Um, the OBX8, when I saw it and I was speaking to Jim Glue, I don't know if Jim's in the chat um, about it, and he, he made this great analogy. It was, it, it was like a, a 1950s power station console where everything was big and everything was had massive labels on it and you knew exactly what this was doing and what that was doing and what it was for, and it was just obvious and you didn't have to think. You could just concentrate on fully on making a sound with this thing and that's the same sort of ethic and it's always it's run through all of tom's stuff uh, i'm sure mm. but anyway um so it's available now it's normally 49.99 it's currently 29.99 or 19.99 if you already own obe so i would say get obe and then get this discount and then you'll have the best of both worlds um there you go that's the prosynth network recommendation of the week yeah um but yeah right so uh there was something else um ben you've got into that whole uvi thing haven't you what they call it sonic pass sonic pass sonic it pass is it's your new favorite thing isn't it their, it's their the big best, subscription service it's the best 20 pounds you could spend a month it is you reckon uh, yeah, yeah yeah well i could think of a couple of illegal ones but <laughs> <laughs> this is the best this is the best legal way of spending twenty pounds a month. I think sounds good. Yeah. So they've added something to that and to their repertoire, which you can you can buy individually, uh, or you if you've got Sonic Pass, um, just go and refresh, and it's there. Um, it's Dual Delay X, which is a, a dual channel delay inspired by reverb designs with geometric sound field manipulation and extensive feedback shaping. Uh, straightforward interface delivers an, uh, excellent results in no time. Now, I don't know if they've added a demo video on here because the only video they had was Venus Theory doing like a big 10 minute thing. And I was, <laughs> um, it wasn't, yeah. So, oh, um, I'm, buckaroonies. <laughs> <laughs> it was like he's in the room. Um, I know, yeah, yeah. So, Ben, have you downloaded this and played with this? Do you have any thoughts or opinions? Uh, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting all excited there. I thought, oh. Sorted. Move I, on. Uh, I've downloaded it. I've downloaded it, but I haven't tried it. But I've no doubt that it will be fantastic because everything else is. 
That, that's yeah. all I can say to try and get myself out the crap here. Uh, <laughs> just let me keep talking. Did I ever tell you about when I was... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Often. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, I, I, I've got to be honest, I haven't tried it because of this issue that I've had. Um, yeah. But I will report back to the Facebook group with a lengthy review of what I think of it. Uh, that's the best I can do, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll hold you to it. Yeah, I promise that'll be there. Uh, <laughs> jo- join the group if you're not already a member. So Remember to answer the oh, questions. Ben, Ben, please, say Facebook again. Facebook. Facebook. Oh, no, 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 like you did the first time. That was brilliant, I loved that. Your Facebook. I don't know how I said it. Facebook. Facebook. Fa- Facebook. 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 Yeah, Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, I often wonder whether I say book or book, right? And then you've just pulled me up on something that I said without thinking, and it was so is it is it bookler or bookler? <laughs> it's bookler. Don't know how wobbly are the knobs. <laughs> <laughs> it's bookler. Yeah. yeah. No, I just yeah. Mark's doing yeah. right now. And have yeah. A... <laughs> Mark's Mark's losing his shit right now. <laughs> yeah. God damn yeah. you! Well, five, mi- five millimetres, man. Five millimetres. I had years of this with Moog. <laughs> um, there are some audio demos. Um, let's, let's have a listen to them. They're not very. Yeah. Uh, have a listen to this. This is uh, called Rotation Delay. And it doesn't make it clear whether it's a dry thing first. And there we go. Let's try the grain delay. So I guess this is dry. It sounds nice. Yeah. I mean, I'm not blown away like, oh my God, I've never heard that before. But it's... It's echo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it, again, you know, it's, UVI always do great interfaces, nice and simple, mm. very straightforward, uh, easy to to understand. Um, can't fault them there. I mean, the to buy this, it's uh, normally fifty nine euros. It's currently on for twenty nine. But of course, if you have Sonic Pass, it's already in your bucket. Um, did you uh, have a listen to this, Christine? Any thoughts yeah, what, on this? What makes this plugin special? is the way that you can tweak the rotation, the diffusion, like you, mm. you can like, and you see it visually. So let's say uh, you okay. want it to like echo a certain way, you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, but you, but then you want to go, uh, 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 you can make it do that. You can make it yeah. do whatever you want. And I am somebody who likes to automate settings. Mm-hmm. And that was the OCD thing of, well, you don't want to automate them all, though. But there, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, places here where you can automate some very, very, very cool sounds and motion to create a really neat atmosphere. So that, yeah, I'm um, going to mess around with that for sure. Are you a, a visual person when it comes to, to audio? Do you really like to see what's going on? Well, you know, I don't like to see what's going on. I see it in my head. Like when I hear it, I don't need somebody to put like a graph out there. Mm -hmm. But if I'm trying to get it to do something, then being able to let the computer visualize it the way Mm -hmm. I'm visualizing it, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's more it's like a three dimensional Mm. uh, graphic interface kind of like you can perceive the three dimensionality of it. So, Mm. yes. Yeah, well, I mean, f- for twenty nine euro, if if you're unsure, you've you've not lost a lot if you do go for it. And of course, if you've got Sonic Pass, then it's there. But yeah, uh, it, it, the quality of the UVI stuff is oh. it, it's up there. Like you yeah. know, it's it, Falcon is just amazing. So yeah, I think you can say it's twenty nine quid, well spent. But for mm-hmm. me, I I give. I give them the Sonic Pass a go and it's yeah. better, use that twenty twenty nine. You know to pay for sonic pass because then you get everything and yeah yeah that's that's a, that, that's a quite a fair point isn't it yeah, yeah it, 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 this is included anyway yeah. but, uh, one question about sonic pass before we move on to the the final mm. couple of things um is it like all the other subscription services is that you can stop at any time yeah yeah you yeah. can just stop well apart from the addiction the addiction <laughs> i'll just keep you there forever i reckon but uh 
Yeah. I, I, and don't do what I did. Don't go through all the presets and favorite them because, it, first of all, you lose like four months of your life. Uh, and second of all, you can't get rid of it then because you've invested too much time into it. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trapped. I'm trapped now. Yeah. Oh, well. But I love it. Good I, I do love it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's it's so good it's so good it's so i, I know they, they've not paid me to say this I, I do pay for it myself like but it, it it's great you know compared yeah. to the other the other services out there i reckon this is like really really good value mm. and and this is it this just shows that they're going to continue adding to it you know they're not yeah. happy for for it to just stay where it was there are going to be new mm. products coming out all the time which is Always a bonus, you know. Yep, you get a little absolutely. bit extra for your money, you know. So, yeah. indeed. Well, there you go. That is Dual Delay X from UVI. So you just go to uvi.net uh, and purchase it from there. Uh, or, of course, if you already have Sonic Pass, just do a refresh and it will appear, uh, and you can go use it from there. A um, couple of things that weren't on the list I sent to everybody. These literally happened today, so we won't go into any huge depth with these. But the the first thing is a bit of bad news, I'm afraid. Um, just last week, we spoke about um, synthesizers.com and how they, they've put the business up for sale. They're hoping to sell it as a going concern, but it's difficult to uh, imagine anyone wanting to invest in an industry that relies so heavily on components, which, of course, are in um, very short supply. Um, but following on from that, this very day, um future retro this is their website this is it um, due to the current state of the world and global parts shortages we are forced to close our doors thank you for 25 years of business and all the relationships we had with our network of dealers and wonderful customers all around the world i mean i didn't honestly realize that future retro had been around for 25 years um there was the triple seven there was the revolution sequence uh and of course just not that long ago excuse me um what they they announced the vectra which is this kind of dual joystick thing we covered that and we thought wow this is going to be really cool i yeah. think they did a short run and sold out and that's it all gone future retro Shame, that. is now retro retro no yeah, yeah. i yeah. tried to do i tried to make it funny there and it didn't work <laughs> um any thoughts on future retro themselves going out of business or the state of the industry in terms of you know, we're seeing more and more of these small boutique manufacturers really, really struggling, and unfortunately, in some cases, going out of business. Any, anyone got any thoughts or opinions on that? I mean, it's sad. It's sad yeah. because yeah. This is, you know it's happening all over the world, and you just got to be grateful for the hardware that you have. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Mm. Kent, from your perspective as a, a synth tech to the the rich and famous. Well, if it, or, if it carries on getting as getting worse, it won't be long before I can't do anything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm already struggling to get pots, for God's sake. Yeah. What and were capacitors. Those pots you, were, yeah, you were talking about some, like a 28p pot last night that was yeah. £9 now. Yeah. Well, they arrived this afternoon and they've sent me the wrong ones. Oh, my word. Wow. And I go, oh, send them back. Yeah, mate, you're in Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. No, Wait, I'll hang on to them. You send me the right ones. What, yeah. what about you know, like the earlier synths? The the all a lot of them shared components. I presume you know the, the, there was like the Curtis chips and stuff like yeah, that yeah, that were yeah. like common to them all. But I, I reckon, I, well, this is just <laughs> I'm, I'm purely surmising this. I've got no nothing to back it up at all. But <laughs> as as technology's moved on, those. The sharing components might have gone a bit like less frequent. So something like the Vectra, it, it, now that uh, F uh, Future Retro have gone, it, it, is that going to be near impossible to repair? Or you, you, mm -hmm. would you still be able to get hold of components to do that? I, I, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I, if anything, there's probably more component sharing now right. than, there, what, than there used to be. Yeah, because of um, well, obviously where you can program things. So you, you've got um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. like a, a set build that you can do with a specific set of components, and they, they, they but it can be something totally different in an, in another machine. Mm. Um, but 
of course, the, the surface mount stuff is not really in danger. The waiting lists are a little longer than they used to be, but they're not, they're not in danger of disappearing. Mm. It's the through-hole stuff. It's like, um, oh, dear. Because mm. they're going, oh, you know, you know, the factory burnt down. Uh, we blame Christine. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. and they're not bothering to bring through, you know, they're not buying through-hole machines again. Go up, you know, this is the time to stop. We're not mm. going to make 741s and TLO84s and stuff like that. So when these really, really common off-the-shelf components that are in all these keyboards in abundance, when they start becoming like Curtis used to be, <laughs> you know, it's it's going to be... Um, mm. I'm, I'm going to have to... I, I fancy being a window cleaner, actually. <laughs> so... Or yeah. vintage Mustang restorer. Yeah, well, I'm going to be doing that at the weekend anyway. Well, yeah, quite. <laughs> no, so, it's just yeah, yeah it's uh... it's all it's it's a little it's really unsettled. Everybody's sort of like just <gasps> waiting mm. for something to be resolved. Yeah, and, and it's not in all aspects, any no. Yeah. yeah, I think it has to. Well, you know, some of these um, very clever economists who face it, they just make it up as they go along anyway. Mm. But they're saying. That even the, the figures now are not even showing uh, that there there is a leveling off coming. No, it's just still. Well, I was about crap. to say that yeah. every time somebody says, "Yeah, we reckon things are going to happen," you know, in twelve months things will start moving again, and then a couple of months later they're saying, "Actually, twelve months from now the things," and so yeah. it just keeps getting pushed back and back and back, and yeah. you just think, "When's when's where's the tipping point? When's it going to? When is everything going to start getting better?" Yeah. Ah, oh, dear. Sad news. But anyway, Future Retro. Unfortunately, there no products available on their website whatsoever. However, what is good is that their support pages are still up. Their downloads are still there. So your know, manuals and OSs and That's really good. All that is still there. They haven't taken that down. But if you do own any Future Retro equipment, I would say go and get everything off of there. Um, yeah. before eventually the website will have to go because if there's no business to, to support the, the running of that, that'll go. Yeah. So, Well, they're not the first to fall and they won't no, be the last. They will not be the last, unfortunately. No. no. It's, it's going to be thinning of the herd, unfortunately. Mm. Um, and the other thing that, a little bit more positive, I guess, I suppose, it depends on your perspective. Um, mm. So uh, Arturia um, announced the release of... Uh, the new version of the, their Artu, Artu, Arturia Sound Explorer collection. Um, this time it's called Beldonna or Beldon or uh, whatever. It's a mountain range. I, I did some research before we came on the show. You see, I do do some. Um, <laughs> it's part of the Dauphin um, Alps in the southeast of France. Um, it's the name of a range over there, the, the Beldon. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's now available. So you can go, get it as a download or as um, an SSD, and it's exactly the same price whichever you go for, so it's entirely up to you which you prefer, whether you want to download the entirety of Arturia's uh, software suite, um, or you just want to buy a 256 gig SSD, which apparently has some spare space on it, so once you've installed everything, you can store things on it as well. Um, but I think £685, when you think that if you want to buy V Collection full price, uh, Kent, didn't you do that recently? Did I? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. You don't remember? No, no I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got free collection, but I, I wouldn't <coughs> pay. I, I can't imagine me myself paying five hundred at uh, six hundred and eighty-five pounds. So. Well, I must v have done it in incremental <laughs> things. Well, v V collection, I think, on its own is five nine nine euros. Oh yes, dog. I did. Yes, yeah. I did. Yes. There you go. You see? Yeah. We're Thank we're you. filling the holes. Yeah. Um, so let, let's just say I'm pretty sure it is 599 that's just for V collection on its own now you with this you also get FX collection 3 which ah. I don't know what the full price of that's got to be 399 or something mm, and not. you get pigments in there as well which uh, is probably a couple of hundred so all of those three together probably well over a thousand and you're getting it for 685 so whilst I've seen some oofs in the chat at £685, I think that's actually a pretty damn good deal. 259, um, the effects collection is. 259. Yeah. So that's 678. Well, that's that. 860. 
say Sorry. a th- say conservative thousand. Yeah. Well, I paid that for a single mid-range quality string library. Yeah. You know, for yeah. one. You know, so. Right. Yeah. You're, get, um, you're getting a shite load of stuff there for that. We're well, getting thirty-three virtual synthesizers and instruments, twenty-six effects and pigments three, as well as fifty additional new sound banks. Uh, with over 4,000 presets, a total of 13,000 presets with instruments and effects. Um, yeah, because if you go onto the Arturia website, you know, they sell little, you know, preset packs for, you know, mm. £10 a pack or something. Um, so you get a whole bunch of those thrown in. So you get, it's actually really good value for money. And it, it when you compare it to uh, Native Instruments, is it Complete? Um, complete yeah. Ultimate Edition is about the same price. Yeah. So I think it's, it's not... better value than that, yeah. personally. Yeah. Um, you still have bought that as well, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> wow. But no, this is nice. And so you can you can choose whether you have it as a download or as a, an SSD. Um, as as a V Collection user, I, I wouldn't mind getting my hands on on that. Just just have the snazzy SSD drive. I quite like those. It looks nice, doesn't it? It's you can the... get them. You can get them off Amazon for about fifteen quid. Them drives. You can just <laughs> yeah. have a get. <laughs> Get a sharpie and, and, and just draw yeah. some squiggly yeah. lines. Yeah, oh, make it look cool. I tell you what, right? I, just I, I'm going off on a tangent here, but that drive reminded me. I bought mm. a drive, a five terabyte drive that looked exactly like that on Amazon yeah. for fifty five quid, five terabytes, SSD. I thought for this 50. is going to be awful. This, so I, I, it came through the post. I plugged it in. It didn't do anything at all. <laughs> it's just like an empty box. That you can just plug a lead in it, 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 it literally. I think they've wired up an LED, it's dead light, but you wouldn't expect it to be heavy light. But it's like there's well, nothing no. in it, yeah. So I sent it back and got a refund and bought a, a SanDisk two terabyte uh portable drive. Oh, right, it's re- yeah, it's really, really good. I've got it because yeah, that yeah. uh Mac Studio's coming, and it's only got a tiny oh, hard drive in it, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm going to be using this for most of my storage, but, but surely, yeah. 55 quid for a five terabyte drive i mean yeah it was it was an experiment buying it really i knew it wasn't going to be any good i just wondered how how bad can can this be yeah but it didn't actually it didn't do anything at all it was quite amazing i've got some stuff here you can buy ben (laughs) <laughs> it's the most expensive LED I've ever, <laughs> ever purchased. Christine, are you? Uh, do you use Arturia stuff? Are you a fan of theirs at all? You know, I mean, I haven't really got a chance to use much Arturia, but I did play around with some stuff in Nam. Mm. And mm. do you have any any thoughts on it? Are you like? Did you like what you heard? Um, I mean, I didn't dislike it. Okay. I can t- I can't, it didn't like jump out at me to know like mm. what I could even talk about, but I just tried to touch everything I could. <laughs> As one does at these things. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, one other thing, um, Gearfest happened, uh, last weekend and hello to everybody that I met. Uh, there. I know Ian's in the chat. Um, but I, uh, so last, last Saturday I met, um, Dom, Mr. Wiggly, who's in the chat. Uh, there was Ian Cole, um, Andy Brooks, Jim Glue, Neil Wharton, um, Pete Catley, Nick Bat was there, had a nice little chat with Nick. Uh, have I forgotten anyone? Who else came down from, um, from Derby? I'm sure I've missed some people. But it, what was really nice, other than being in uh, a music tech environment such as Tar Yard, which is a fantastic place, it was just great to hang with human beings in this kind of lovely area with all you know the the community was all there and we all just kind of by the end of the day we'd all gathered outside this cafe and we were just sitting there and just chatting and it was just so nice to to see people um and and hang with like-minded nerds i know something i can say about arturia oh go for it in one of Mark Doty's videos, he did this like blind sound sample because you were supposed to know oh, what yes. the mini mode was or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you listen to all these sounds and then everyone says, you know, what they thought it was. And all I was like, was like, okay, you know, I like number two. Number two is the best. And it was mm. Holly Fruit. Yes. It wasn't the mini mode, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that sounded amazing. Yeah. So I'm going to get my hands on that. Yes, well, do well, I love I love mine. 
Ma Mark's uh, videos on the Polybrew are just yeah. they, that is mm. the basis of my entire knowledge of the machine is just mm. from them them videos. It just yeah. teaches you everything and from well, that's the, Mark's the videos. Big, yeah, but all over, it, isn't it? It's yeah. fantastic. It, it lets you master the machine. Brilliant stuff. Mm. Hat off to him if I could, didn't have headphones on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and off, um, um, off the we, cap. Doff the cap. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Didn't Mark uh, Markle confirm this in the chat room? I I, um, I deleted the notification because I don't need notifying. Um, but uh, I think Mark put out another video today. Another was it an ARP twenty six hundred M video or something? So go and check that out. Also talking about synth tech videos, Alex Ball's new one is rather good on the Junos. He's got a Juno six, a Juno one hundred six, and the Juno X. And I, I think when we reviewed the the Juno X on here, I kind of like dismissed it out of hand. You know, two thousand, you know, for something that's essentially just like a software thing, um, in a in a nice keyboard uh, case. Actually, it's kind of increased my lust for one because he was doing ABs next to the originals, and it couldn't couldn't tell the difference. It was just brilliant. Mm. Um, so yeah, the Juno video, uh, Alex Ball's channel. Go and watch that. Um, but yes, Gearfest was brilliant. So thanks to everyone that came and said hi. Ollie Freak, there's another name that I forgot. Um, but yeah, really, really good. And my, I took my son and he absolutely loved it. And we all got to play on OBX8, Profit 5, Rev 4s, Kurzweil um, K2700. Oh. Uh, all the teenage en engineering stuff was there. That ridiculous mixer, which yeah. is like this. Is it like a pack of cards? And the funniest thing was when I was talking, I said, look, I can't use these because I've got short, stubby, fat fingers. And you've got these little rotaries that are tiny, tiny, tiny little things. And the bloke from Teenage Engineering recommended that I use the tip of my finger. And to which I responded, <laughs> I'll use the tip of my finger, pal. Yeah, um, this it was one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to do it, but yeah, you went there. You went there. It was, it was just, oh, really? Oh, come on. But no, you can't deny the engineering and the design is incredible, mm -hmm. um, but not practical, and certainly for, for somebody like me. Anyway, um, I'm conscious Bush. of the time, and I want to move on and talk to our uh, fantastic guest. Before I do, can I play one of your videos, Christine? Would you mind? Oh, yes, you may. Because I don't want to get a copyright strike, um, but I guess you own all this, so if we do, we know where to come. Um, so let's have a quick look at, I think, what is your latest video on your channel? Um, let's bring this up here. It's called Love, Love, Love. Um, and uh, let's let's run this one. Uh, here we go. Add it to the stream. It's got a Juno and a DX7 in there, I believe. Yeah, that's a little bit of love 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 um and the channel is let me just pause this it's magic powers you can go to that on youtube uh, there it is the link is already below uh in the video description on youtube love that track um so let's start off christine let's let's start at the very beginning because apparently it is a very good place to start um how did you get into music and and then how did you then move into this wonderful world of music technology what was your journey what was what was your in well if you really want to start at the beginning when my yeah. mom was pregnant with me mm -hmm. she prayed all the time for god to give her baby the gift of music because she'd always wanted to play the piano and then she couldn't because her parents were poor and she practiced on a cardboard piano like tried to teach herself to play. So mm -hmm. I'm in the tummy and they're like, please, please, God, give my baby the gift <laughs> of music. 
Um, and then, I mean, I guess I was nine, nine years old, and I always liked watching Charlie Brown and Snoopy because Schroeder was playing Beethoven. I just, I loved that. And we went to um, Toys R Us, okay. another company that's out of business. Yeah, um, yeah. But they had the little tiny keyboards and i started messing around with them figured out how to octave shift and everything and then i figured out how to play most of fear elise okay. on these little keyboards and my mom was like whoa i want you to learn how to play piano for real mm. <laughs> so um yeah you know, we got a piano from a place called the piano hospital and it was, um, you know, a, u a used piano. And at this place, I think we were in Vancouver, Washington, um, blind students, blind technicians actually would tune these pianos and play oh. on them. And I will never forget playing Amazing Grace, just kind of tinkling it out, not really yeah. knowing how to play yet. And in all these rooms surrounding me, these blind musicians started playing along and it was just uh, the whole yes yeah, symphony of, of amazing grace and it was really like it was a super moving experience so um yeah i got the piano and i just uh taught myself to play mm -hmm. i did go get some piano lessons from a, a lady named irma dirtall and she was very <laughs> much about music theory and articulation and it was you know, the very old fashioned style of learn how to play the piano right. Yeah. And uh, we did, we, I, I started composing and she wanted to enter me in a contest. So she entered a sonatina that I wrote in the Washington State Young Composers Project. Not even gonna tell you what year that was, but I won <laughs> first place in that one. And that got me really excited to, um, to do some other things. Um, I went up going to a summer music camp mm -hmm. and they asked me if I would be the pianist for the Portland Youth Symphonietta. And I was excited to do that. And we practiced and I learned Tchaikovsky and I felt like, oh, this is so great. But then my dad had to move our whole family before I got to go on the tour and do all that. So I was just kind of whisked away from that to um, Oregon. And then I started writing songs and like songs with words and just kind of expressing my teenage self in that way. You know, like mm. my diary had chord notation <laughs> over it. And I spent, I don't know, I mean, hours every day. I was homeschooled, right? So I spent hours every day working on, you know, music in some creative way. I had to practice my Schubert for syllabus and all this. But when my mom would leave the house, I'd get out my, my notes and I'd start, you know, writing my songs. So, yeah, I did that for a while and um, wound up going to Scripps College for women on a, a music scholarship. Cool. So I went there and of course, you know, I, having been homeschooled most of my life, I couldn't wait to just get out in LA and like experience <laughs> life and all that. So I've played way less classical music than I think they were expecting me. <laughs> they gave me the scholarship. But you know, it is what it is. And um, I just really started composing more of my own stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up getting a Los Angeles Music Award in LA. And I was like, okay, so I don't feel so bad that I stopped doing classical music with the same passion because this is something that I'm good at. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess that the, the journey there was um, th there were some record labels, you know, there's always talk with, with mm -hmm. but there's nothing really jived and it, what i was feeling like was happening at the time is uh, i really hadn't found my sound i hadn't really found myself i was full of a lot of uh, potential you love that word right and people really wanted to turn me into this or into that and so like one of the big decisions of my life was that i chose not to do that and instead to uh, compose and learn on my own. And I did end up doing that. And now I can say that I have found my sound. And the big change was when I realized that, that my 
digital piano that I had had like other sounds in it too <laughs> that I could start playing with. And then that turned into, you know, a MIDI keyboard and then like into software synthesis and then into real synthesis. And I guess when I got into analog solutions, that's when I really started learning how to use, you know, synths that weren't just a keyboard with some buttons on the top. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just love making music so much and having lost my studio in the fire, mm. I realized, you know, that it was so much more than a hobby for me because I there's nothing I could do with my day. You know, I realized like how deeply my identity was wrapped up in it. So getting my studio back together has made me feel like, you know, I've come full circle in a way and I'm just sure. excited to see what I do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So tell us about the, the connection with Analog Solutions and, and, you know, Tom's work, because, you know, Tom's a, a, an evil genius and he, he makes <laughs> them, uh, yeah, he makes some like amazing it. things. <laughs> and, um, you know, he, he's just, he's crazy, but he's t very typically an English synthesizer manufacturer. Uh, how are you introduced to his work? And, you know, what is, what is it about his, his instruments that really excites you and motivates you? Well, okay, so I joined some Facebook groups, mm -hmm. synth Facebook groups, and this had to be like 2013 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, you know, started reading what people were posting and putting comments like, <laughs> oh, this sounds like cardboard, and oh, this sounds amazing, and started figuring out what it was that I actually liked. Because mm -hmm. like I said before, you know, I see music very visually. And I see the sounds as having shapes of like roundness or jaggedness and, and colors and everything. Like I really visually see that. And so I started looking for the patterns. And when I heard something I thought was good, what did it all have in common? And then learning what that was. And I was super blown away by the demos that Res Filter did for Analog Solutions. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know, you know, where do you get this? What is it? How does it work? And that ended up leading to them having me do a Christmas song wow. for uh, the Analog Solutions Christmas video for the Polymath. So mm -hmm. I, you know, wrote that to try to be funny, which I was funny, <laughs> and Vince Clark yeah. said I was funny. So that's my claim. Well, there's an endorsement <laughs> if ever if ever there was one. Yeah. yeah, and I just I just love the sound. It's you know big and round and fat. And I the first one that I got was a Telemark, and it was kind of semish. You know, I think that mm -hmm. that was part of his inspiration for making that. And I don't know, I mean, I had quite a few other things. I had Leipzig, I had really cool um, Oberkorn and just had it all linked together. And I love, you know, being able to twist and turn and 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 do all that. But of course it, it went up in, in smoke. And then Tom sent me this after the fire. It was oh, the first thing you. that I got and I, cried oh he could have sent you a colossus i mean come on <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I want so, a double stack yeah talking of it i mean what what are your thoughts about the colossus because it is an amazing thing oh god i mean where do you even start i would love to get my hands on it but mm. i would like octopus arms to be able to do everything <laughs> that's one of the see if mark Doty and i had a colossus together oh it together like wouldn't that be awesome shouldn't we what do that? sweet music you two would make yeah that was the first <laughs> in there you know that'd be so fun <laughs> i've got i've got to see that i'm, I'm we, yeah let's let's get something together we've got to see That's you and mark to make it happen <laughs> well you know we've we've got um we've got synth fest over here 8th of october Is and i know and he's going to have the double stack apparently oh my god i think wow. that's that's kind of what i've uh, i'm led to believe it's worth going just for that just yeah. to see that i mean i, I yeah. saw him that he delivered one and i don't know who the guy was he delivered it to i didn't recognize him and the only reason i say that is because to afford a double stack you've got to be quite you know i saw mm. that i just saw the picture you know posted to on the guy leaning like, next to who yeah. is that guy yeah, who is him? Who is How much he? money has he got? In the mafia? <laughs> but he, he looked like a tall guy, and yet this thing was towering way mm. above him. It's just... Mm. I remember when Tom brought it to the last uh, synth fest that we had in person in 20... I want to say 2019, I think. Um, 
and him and Simon brought it in and it was just like everybody just slowly gathered around this one thing and was just going because it was it was just uh, incredible yeah I'd like to see that so you've got the um, what's that there again I forget the, the name Nibor, 24. that's it Nibor what else did you have and I'm, I'm, try, I'm not you know trying to incur very painful memories of all the things that you lost but um because you were some quite of my into favorite them. things some of my favorite things that i lost was my dx7 and oh, um, my Juno love you so those together i mean there's just something about those together yeah and people can say what they will about either of those. I can't, they make me so happy the sounds for example the juno 60 that sound that comes out of it i see that as like a oh, technical rainbow, like if you're blowing a, a bubble right mm -hmm. in the sun and it's got like that purple and the, yeah. all the colors shimmering like you know, oil in a parking lot or something. I see that come out of that synth with like little to no effort, no matter what it is that I programmed on that thing, it blew up this like colorful rainbow soft bubble that was just out oh, so effing amazing mm. and i wound up getting that because i fell in love with the jupiter 8 and couldn't buy it yeah. so i i listened to like the the uh shoot offs or what do they call it shootouts yeah. between the, the juno and the jupiter and yeah, i yeah. mean you actually totally hear a difference but i mean if you're not comparing the two of them you who would know really yeah. it's, it's amazing so yeah i i was using those a lot i never really collected since for the purpose of collecting them i really just wanted to learn to make sounds that were going to express me mm -hmm. so i when i was doing music um before the fire it was all very multi-tracking i used the apogee duet mm -hmm. and something that i'm more interested in getting getting to do soon is like plugging multiple things in and playing actual recording more than one track at a time mm -hmm. so yeah but i was like the queen of multi-tracking <laughs> <laughs> so uh looking in the room behind you you've got uh, a jupiter 80 um mm -hmm. which uh, is, is very um polarizing shall we say and some people really love it some people really hate it um you clearly like it and also uh, to your uh, your left there you have um uh, of course a a, a bootler um yeah. so are you very much you, you don't care about whether it's this whole east coast west coast thing as long as it's making cool sounds as long as it didn't burn up in the fire <laughs> 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 yeah you know, i mean if i could actually choose what instruments were you know back there mm -hmm. i wouldn't have picked the jupiter 80. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is when the fire happened, I had lent a keyboard to this guy from my old job. Mm -hmm. And and I had actually been trying to get it back to like not long <laughs> before the fire happened. So when everything burned up, they were like, but you still have the Jupiter 80. I'm like, great. <laughs> but, <no. laughs> but you know what? Like when it's all that you have, for a while, you know, you learn to yeah. to love it. But of course, I'm comparing it to like the Juno, mm. and feeling like you know that's not my pet. You know, that's a replacement pet. You know, yeah. so. Uh, but I I do like it. And to be totally honest, though, like right now, I'm only using it as like a MIDI controller. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Your secret is safe with us. You know, and okay. the seven and the seventy odd people that are watching. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Christine, which Juno was it that you had? The Juno 60, and I just had it right. all redone, too. Oh. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, feel for you. It's, it's funny because I was watching that Alex Ball video last night, and so he, he covers the, the Juno 6, the 106, and the Juno X together and does, you know, comparisons, but does it, you know, the, the brilliant Alex Ball thing where he gives you a little potted history. And I didn't realise that, and Kent, Kent's probably going to sit again, yeah, of course, is that the Junos were using the same components as the Jupiter 8. Uh, a lot of the chips and the ICs were the same mm. uh, in the Junos as they were in the, in the Jupiter 8. And they didn't, like, you know, crap out and you just use cheaper bits and bobs. It was, it was that. The sound mm. is so comparable between those yeah. two. Like, I mean, if you're ever 
curious to listen to those shootouts. I mean, I keep asking myself because I'm interested in perception, like how how do I perceive sound? How do I perceive you know the things that I do? How does it have certain em- emotional regulation upon me, etc.? Mm. So I found it very interesting to not look at the screen and to just sit there and listen and i can always tell which was which because honestly i'm like well that one sounded a little better but that's all i could say it wasn't mm. like it sounded so different i could totally imagine them being you know made out of a lot of say, a lot of the same components because they sound it's like you know one sister's just a little bit prettier but they're both hot <laughs> <laughs> now there is something there is definitely something about the juno sound and i'm i'm, I'm never sure whether it's um uh, how to kind of explain this properly but um it's i'm not sure whether it's the actual synthesizer itself or whether it's the the nostalgia for that sound because being you know a teenager during the 1980s so much of the music i love was made with you know dx7s and junos and jupiters so i don't know whether it's just you know that kind of nostalgia thing that i really like or whether i actually really like that synth and I've never never been fortunate enough to own a Juno. I've only got the you know, the software version, so I don't know how people tell me they're pretty close. So, you know, certainly the Roland Cloud ones. Who are, are you, I you loved ever... playing it. It wasn't just because of the nostalgic sound, mm. but that's when when we're talking about mixing the DX7 and the Juno. That does bring yeah. like super super nostalgia. Yeah. But you know, I mean, it, when it comes to like making your own patches and everything, you you can get like just so much color like this lfo thing that i got going on when the very first day i got the juno is i recorded that love 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 song mm-hmm. right. and it, that whoa, 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 whoa. you know yeah. I mean, and the pad i mean i didn't take hardly any time at all to get that sound there but yeah. they were not presets so yeah. it was really easy for me to coax just this rich lush vibrancy out of it and i just love playing it you know and think about like the 80s in general okay it, the 80s had color things were big the hair was big you know and you, <laughs> you're like very colorful you know blowing bubbles and that is what the sound of the juno is like irrespective mm. of the nostalgic connection yeah. there's a zeitgeist there that yeah, yeah. is channeled and comes through in those instruments so yes it's nostalgic but it, yeah no absolutely no yeah i've had i've had a juno 6 and two juno 106s and i I love them but i always end up needing money and and they are usually the most (laughs) valuable thing i own at the time so it's like right i'm gonna have to sell the juno and i'll buy it back at a later date but now uh with that juno x yeah I'd be very tempted to go for that instead of a vintage Juno now, just because it's a, it sounds really, really great. Mm. Uh, and it's not even ACB as well, is it? It's like it's based on Zen technology. It's Zencore, isn't it? Yeah. But it's, it, it, to me, it sounds great, and it, 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 gives you, it gives you that nostalgic vibe, but it's capable of so much more as well. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that was the, oh, the that, one. Th- so Wagyu's <laughs> saying in the chat, get a System 8. Same yeah. story, Wagyu. I had one and I had to sell it. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that got shifted on as well. I think it was um, it was somebody we know who bought that off me. Anyway, yeah. I won't mention it. Just but a, again, going back to that Alex Ball video, which is very pertinent that you know it came out last night about the Junos, that he was saying how simple it is to get a really great sound within like 15, 20 seconds. Oh, because yeah. it has that really simple, straightforward interface. Mm. Again, you know, from the the mini moog onwards any synthesizer that just uses that basic you know layout is so easy to get a great sound out of without without too much effort you know yeah same with the jp8 yeah 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 yeah. they're really easy to program yeah and and that high pass filter when at first that doesn't seem as though it's very useful but it's great Mm. (laughs) and it's one of the 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 best things on it yeah Yeah. and the wonderful chorus unit as well oh the chorus yeah I did struggle a little bit with the polymath. Yeah, um, I must admit, I I I, I was always had sort of like um, uh, 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 like this, and I was oh, yeah. building them for Tom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God's sake, <laughs> I'm building well, them, and I can't. I'm going. Uh, I, I still have haven't got them. a decent sound out of mine. Mine's, mine's it's, it's it's 
it's not done anything were substantial, like just because I'm rubbish. I know it can yeah, sound I, great because I've watched loads of videos, but yeah, the, the, there's that patching as well that's required. Yeah, and it it's throw you know because at least with a twenty six hundred you can run it without having mm. a patch called mm. anywhere near it. Mm. So yeah, and it always confused the hell out of me. Mm. So. Am I the only one? Is this another hydrosynth moment? Am I the only person in this group of four that doesn't have an analog solutions instrument in their room? Because obviously Christine's got one. You've got one. You still got one? I'm assuming Kent somewhere. No, I gave them all to Ben. Oh, you gave them yeah. all to Ben. Okay. Oh, so bad. What was it? A, a Nyborg, the Polymath, to and there, the. To there, look. What was the third polymath one? The, 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 and the Nyborg. And, and then there was a. Uh, was it a Leipzig? Yeah. It was the Leipzig, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Leipzig, yeah. 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 Oh, but I mean, I, I built 50 Mega City sequences for Tom. Uh, I've never seen so many switches in your life. <laughs> Because it, they, well, it's at least it's a 64-step hardware sequence, so every, oh, man. And there were huge boards as well. But I really haven't seen any Mega Cities anywhere. No. I've never come across a Mega City again. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where they are. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody must have them. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've, we've got some questions in the chat. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you to Andy Synthatic for your donation. Um... Oh, what's, what's this? Speaking of GIF, has his Brooksy testing since one was in a suitcase? Um, oh, yes, because, yeah, of course, um, Andrew broke the Profit 5 at uh, GearFest, uh, although he won't admit to uh, breaking it. He, he said it was all to do with micro tuning. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, thanks for your donation there, <laughs> what Andy. Did you Love do? It. <laughs> well, I, I remember I got there about 11, and there's the yeah. OBX8 and the Profit 5 Rev 4. And, you know, I'm, I'm getting, you know, incredibly excited. Uh, to play both of these things and they were fine absolutely fine later on in the afternoon mr brooks and his entourage go over there and starts playing the, the rev 4 and he's like this is no I'm, I'm playing an octave but it's not an octave it's like you know it's like a like a semitone uh. and i think the excuse was that he he or somebody before him had bumped it into some kind of microtonal mode um that was their excuse but we just say he broke it um but no there's a question yeah there's a question um here in the chat uh oh, this is this is not a question this is a statement i'm sorry i don't know even why i let that one through um it's just not he is not the only one that feels that way though. Uh, yes and yeah. well you know what can i say what can i say um but uh redneck discotech what a great name that is what was the most <laughs> valuable or most favorite piece of gear that you lost in the fire again i don't want to sort oh. of stoke the flight oh no i shouldn't say that should I? Uh, I, don't, I don't want to um you know bring up bad memories but you know uh, i honestly it was my hard drive it was my really? hard drive like years and years and mm, years of course of my hopes and my dreams yeah. you know like when you decide okay i'm going to record myself I'm not going to pay thousands of dollars to a producer who doesn't really love me or my music, just wants to make money for sitting in their studio. Mm. Can't blame them, but, right? It's like, I'm going to learn how to do this. And so it was this heart wrenching, like hardworking, like Rocky, you know, like, mm. you know, that, that whole scene, that was like years of my life. Well, I figured out how to get the, this out of here and, and there. Right. Yeah. And so the, when I lost the first hard drive, it was okay because you know what? I didn't know what the hell I was doing and I'm glad that that, that got messed up. After the lightning strike, yeah. you know, it's like, what the F? <laughs> and then the last batch of songs that I did, I felt like they were really good. I'm gonna change the world. <laughs> and then the effing burned up. And so the fact is the music that I have, that I have been um, releasing. So like since the fire, there were some MP3s that I had bounced and right. I, I had, they were old versions of, of songs that I was like, eh, that's not good enough. But that's <laughs> all that I had. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, my hard drive with the music that I felt like I was really proud of, that's the piece of gear that I mm. wish didn't burn. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So what are you doing in, in terms of making music now? You know, where are you at now? You've got a nice little kind of room there yes, with some instruments. Okay, so I have so I have a condo, and it's a 
bedroom condo and I have two twin daughters. So they get one of the bedrooms. Notice there's not a bed in here. <laughs> I don't have a bedroom. Oh, wow. I have a studio and, uh, you know, I sleep on the, the couch. So does wow. my wow. That's, <laughs> that's commitment. So that's that's dedication, dedication right there. Now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. well impressed with that. Yeah. I need yeah. to use my space for what matters the most. And uh-huh. so I, I got a cool desk. I have my Genelex. I love how the sound comes mm-hmm. out of my Genelex. And I just, you know, I have some mixers and things down there, my mic. But I'll just sit here on this stool and I will, I will work. And there's, like in the creative process, there's that, you know, flash of inspiration that can be really exciting. And I love it when that's happening. Yeah. But I realize what I'm really addicted to is once I have built a track and it's at a certain point and I'm hearing it in my phones and I'm hearing how the sounds are doing just what I want. It's like I, I'm on a fun ride at Disneyland. It goes here, 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 here. Mm-hmm. And my heart does the thing that your heart does when you love what you've done. Yeah. That is my favorite part of things. So I'm still creating new music to get to that point. And so I'm mm-hmm. starting from scratch and I have I have songs that I have started and using you know the gear that I have here and I also have quite a few of the old not good enough mp3s <laughs> and I told myself after the fire I'm like I'm just going to release this stuff I should have done it a long time ago. This is the universe's way of telling me that I'm an idiot for like not thinking <laughs> it's good enough. Just put it out there, you know? But mm. if people don't like it, who cares, right? So like I have all these songs and I'm gonna release and it's like, okay, I have to make some videos because nobody plays a song without a video. And then I thought, okay, I can just like film the clouds going by or something and and then just have the music play. But then I'm like, no, I want to, I want to do cool things. So when I was at my mom's house before I finally found, you know, a new spot for us to live, I had my green screen set up because I had nothing else. I owned nothing else. Mm. I had a green screen and then my cell phone. So I used that space to make some kind of like creative um, videos if you go back. But mm-hmm. since I got here to this new house, I just have not had the room set up to do that. So I've just kind of thrown the last few videos together. But I think I'm going to actually do a little production on some of the next ones okay. coming in. And that because like the creative process is so fun. It's more than just the music. And I realized, like, I actually really want to get into filmmaking. You'd never know from the video that you played. But but I think I have, like, a good eye for doing that kind of stuff. And a lot Mm -hmm. of, um, I just visually see a lot of things. And, of course, it would be nice to have a a budget. But I find it really challenging and exciting and fun to have to MacGyver things and to make a video with just, you know, what I've got. And yeah. like when I was starting, I was getting really into it. And my kids, they're four and a half, they're almost five. They would come into the room like Isabella the other day stuck her sandwich in front of the camera while we were <laughs> rolling. And you know what? I mean, I could get mad and don't think that I have it once or twice. But I found that those moments are actually really effing hilarious. Mm-hmm. And it's my it's part of my so my whole story is like So yeah, so I'm like learning to embrace it and you know put them in my little videos and stuff. So yeah, we'll do something fun. Is there any um any possibility of a collaboration between you and Mark? Oh yeah, I mean we've yeah. been collaborating. Well, yeah, musically, <laughs> musically, I was meaning. We <laughs> make sweet, sweet. <laughs> oh, I can see where this is going. Yes, no, we're absolutely yeah. going to do that, and that was oh, cool. what well, I'll tell you a funny, cute story about Mark when we were like last year talking back and forth, and he kind of made this pitch for why I should 
fall in love with him, even though I already was there. <laughs> but he's <laughs> talking and saying these things. And then his camera just pans over to the ARP 2600 and leaves yeah. it for a while. <laughs> so I'm super excited that the universe in its strange way has not only brought me love and um, creative stimulation, etc. But at, I lost my synthesizers and now Mark is bringing his studio here to Oregon. And we're, we're gonna be 1.6 miles away from each other very, very soon. So I'm gonna get to play all these things that I never thought nice. I would get to play. Wow. And um, yeah, and I didn't have to buy them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Brilliant. Nor did Mark for most of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm sorry, I'm sorry I stole your question there. Were you going to ask that, Ben, about that the collaboration? That was going to be my question. Oh, yeah, I'm but, so sorry. But Mark said that they've already collaborated musically. On a, on okay. we, have, we have started some things, yes. Nice. Yeah. Looking Very forward good. to hearing That was real yeah. So when he was here, um, I have never really collaborated with anybody before. It, not in this type of a, a situation. I've had things mm -hmm. back and forth, but never that whole in the same room type of thing. Mm. And it's like I have my process, how, how I like to start a logic file and what I do. But the whole part of like collaborating is that like X factor that, you mm. know, that the, the element of chaos and the yeah. unknown yeah. that brings yeah. things together. Because I think that well laid plans are great and all, but they kind of suck compared to like what happens when the element of chaos is introduced. Yeah and controlled so yeah he came in here and uh he we pulled up a drum kit i made some kind of drum kit for him that he was using the jupiter 80 to trigger it and <laughs> at first he was just like oh my god i i need to hit a drum it needs to have a real sound of being beaten there's a certain sound <laughs> i mean he's totally right but i don't fucking have a drum to beat <laughs> so, you know. so he started playing like we just picked the tempo he started playing um with this kit and it, instead of like what I might do is just play the kick drum on one track and then the snare on another track, mm. he sat there and like played like that kind of thing. Yeah. And I can not believe he could do that. I mean, I guess a lot of people can do that, but like I can't do that. So he did that. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to take the next track. And so we picked an instrument. And I just kind of started, you know, dink, dink, dinking around with it. Then he kind of changed the dink, dink, dink. And then I changed the dink, dink, dink one more time. And we had this really very cool motif going on. And it didn't sound like something I would have picked by myself, mm. you know. And, and, yeah, we started to put vocals on it. But then we stopped. We haven't got to finish <laughs> it yet. But, yeah, we are working on some things. Nice. And we really want to do a cover of... Um, Donna Summer, I feel love. Oh yeah, <laughs> we had a yeah. really funny experience where I don't know. Am I allowed to say, it? Mark Doty? Can I tell this story? <laughs> <laughs> am I allowed to tell the Donna Summer story? <laughs> Give it twenty seconds because I think the feed is a little bit behind. Yeah, uh, we'll see I if think we get he... permission. I think he says yes. I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh. he, he he said yes. Okay, okay. It, 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 oh, he's actually he spelled it. He spelled it, oh, God, but it means yes, <laughs> yeah. I think. Okay, so <laughs> there's, like, something that happens called, like, a first-time experience of things. And, you know, when you get to be a certain age, you don't have very many first-time mm. experiences anymore. And I was like, I want to give this guy a first-time experience. <laughs> And so, I mean, I live in Oregon, right? Southern Oregon, like lots of hippies and stuff around here. I got some really, and it's legal, I got some really good psilocybin, okay. <laughs> mushrooms, chocolate. And I, I split, did we split one or did we each have one? I think we each had one. <laughs> anyway, this guy who's this analytical, always in control person, just completely like, lost touch with reality oh. and it was it was so <laughs> precious he turned into a philosopher he said my face kept melting under my <laughs> onto my chest it was like a hilarious and very funny experience <laughs> but in the midst of all of that he's experiencing the audio hallucinations which is a huge part of any psychedelic experience mm. and he goes I don't remember this song sounding like this. And it was the Donna Summer I, I Feel Love. And you know, it's like, 
And then he looks at the TV and he looks at Don Summer and he goes, I don't remember her looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. That's like, no, that's our, our song. So. <laughs> oh, cool. Now, you, now you've got to do the cover version. You've right? got to. Yeah. <laughs> And the video's got to replicate what Mark saw. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, well, I'm sure there'll be a second time experience. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cool stuff. <laughs> Guys, have you got any uh, questions that I, could, that I shouldn't be stealing from you? Um, uh, well, uh, I, I was wondering, uh, like Mark mentioned in the chat about uh, Christine's process, said that she's got this amazing process. She knows what, she, what exactly what she wants and that, how to get it. I was just wondering if, if you could like talk us through maybe your usual i think we all have a a kind of system don't we we try and mix it up a little bit to try and get some new inspiration i, I mean i I, we do have, I guess yeah. i kind of do but um it i have i guess more than one process but they, i have certain like i moves i have, I have some moves you guys <laughs> certain <laughs> yeah. moves that work for me and the, i mean for one if if i'm hearing in my head because there's a couple different ways to make music, more than a couple. But in, on one hand, a uh, song would come into my head and I'd be like, okay, I'm going to lay down this, um, this idea and build around it. Okay, everybody knows about that. But I, when that doesn't happen, because sadly I'm not struck by a bolt of inspiration every single day, um, <laughs> I, I, I sit down and I pick out, like I used to have a super awesome custom drum kit that I had made with really awesome samples from like Lindrum and just a lot of the old vintage hardware drum mm -hmm. machines that also burned up. But I had this amazing, I called it purple bubble gum kit or something. And I love how it sound, it was really brown. And I had my special presets that I put on the master bus. <laughs> and uh. I <laughs> it got so that it sounds good while I work because my yeah. brain wants to hear compressed sound. Mm. I have yeah. to hear that or I think it sounds shitty. And then yeah. I end up getting all confused about what I'm doing because I think I don't like it. So I've learned by throwing like a, you know, a, a mastering plugin on the master bus that I am able to get the sound that I want enough to stay inspired. So yeah, I like to, you know, come up with a drum beat that all on its own would be fun. It just, yeah. you know, <laughs> something that, you know, it's fun yeah. all by itself, not just <laughs> right. Yeah. So I do yeah. that. And then I just like, do something else and kind of move my hand on the keyboard, but it's always recording and try not to actually pay attention to what I'm doing at all. Like have my, my awareness kind of separate away from that. And I'm telling you, my hand will end up doing something really cool and I'll have no idea what it was until I go back through the MIDI data, but it's kind of like throwing something at a wall and seeing if it sticks. Mm -hmm. And so like that will happen. And then I start, hearing what the song wants to be and it's almost like a, a game that i play with the universe where i will make a move and i know what it is right and then i let the universe make a move by me doing something really random and it works and then when it stops working that's when i just need to stop because i always ruin it if i don't stop <laughs> but yeah that's my that's what i like to do and leaving that element of chaos open makes it like i'm discovering something it makes music so fun it's not like oh i have to express myself i feel into <laughs> the world need to know it's more like hey big thing up there i'm down here i got these things let's try to communicate can you hear me you mm. know and that's so sort of like it's kind of like that sort of an experience for me and it doesn't always work you know but when it does it feels really magical yeah. so that's me do yeah. you like gravitate to a particular instrument like as the first thing are you inspired by like just going through a bunch of presets and thinking oh that that's nice <sighs> Uh, I mean, that's, that's a really good question. If I don't really do that as much as I used to, like when I got Omnisphere at first, mm -hmm. I had already, I had tracked out a song and I had all the parts written. And so 
I was trying, oh, let's play this part with this instrument. And, and mm -hmm. it just ended up being really messy because I had not written it specifically for the sound. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if I don't have like an idea already kind of percolating, then yes, I will f dial in a sound that I, that I really like and use m the MIDI controller to play it and find what comes out the best with that particular sound and the shape of it. So yes, I'll do that. But kind of my more fallback on is like, I've got the this logic, um, just like the basic little keyboard sounds and stuff in there. Like there's little basic basses and stuff and I'll just come up with the bass line and not worry about what the sound is yet until I kind of get one more part. And then to those two together, I will dial in a sound for, but if I write too many parts and I haven't dialed in the sound, then it ends up being a total mess, but it's, you know, it's a combination of that. And, yeah. You know, just seeing uh, what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do, do you, uh, I presume you use like monophonic synths and polyphonic synths. Uh, have you got any preference between polyphonic and paraphonic? Oh no! <laughs> oh, he had to. He had to go there. Oh dear! I can't believe you just did that. Oh no, I can't. Actually. I love them all. Well, let's 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 cut to the chase. Where do you stand on par paraphony? Oh, don't oh, no. don't. They seem to have a lovely re relationship. <laughs> you stand on the inchakes, otherwise you break the keys. Oh. Hang on, that deserves a... Thank you. There we go. I'm here all week. Try the chicken. <laughs> um, uh, I, was, I had a question lined up and it's gone completely. Let me just go back here. Oh, yes. Um, so one thing that I've noticed, and I think also um, Sasquatch in the chat room noticed, is you have like um, certain different um characters like you know you have Kristar and there's horrible adorable and it, tell us a little bit about you know those who do do different personalities um deliver different things uh, or is that just branding or what, what's that all about no you're right about that so I, I i never really knew like what my stage name or my whatever name was going to be uh, i just kind of had a couple characters that came through and one of like the best things that ever happened for me and my relationships is when i realized that this wasn't really all me like there were sort of like energy channels out there and i could tune into them and let them come through and then get to the point where i embodied them enough to to be like that so yes horrible horrible adorable it's just like the reverse side of magic powers like on one end you know magic powers will write about love and triumph and the rest of that and and wear rainbow clothing or whatever and then horrible adorable is like you know the others <laughs> the dark side the dark side oh. i guess so, but it's so fun though yeah. like i feel when that comes through there's an absolute feeling like as if somebody actually walks in the room and right. when i feel that feeling when I feel that feeling, I something is going to happen. And I wish mm. it was that way all the time. I wish that even for magic powers, there was a feeling like ma magic powers is really like me in my heart. But like horrible, adorable, I don't even really know where it comes from. But, yeah. Oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> does, it, does it start with the persona? Or does the persona come from, you know, when you're just you know noodling so to speak it, it, it just comes in like there's a song uh, vampires and mm -hmm. uh just god i had just drank a beer i was living on a pot farm growing marijuana <laughs> and i i just like i don't know i hadn't drank alcohol in a while and one beer had me feeling like whoa so you know i, I went into my studio and i threw down just you know some beats using um stylus rmx is what i used at that yeah. time yeah. i don't really use it so much now but um threw it down and all of a sudden like i go something about you baby <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna record that, and I just didn't stop. That whole thing came through, all on its own, and I had to like kind of control myself and make sure that I was recording and that I was to the next track because like it was happening. And then right. when it was all done, it was just kind of like. It, it, it was gone and then the next day i was like here i am all right let's go and it just wasn't there <laughs> yeah. but but it does come back so yeah. i don't i don't know if i have to maybe I have to drink drink the smoke weed yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely me. yeah there's uh, another question uh from from andy asking about your favorite synthesis types do you have a favorite synthesis type is there something that really floats your boat or the synth that really does something for you i mean god you know i mean they're all so awesome in their own way i really do want to get my hands on that poly group from what i have from mm -hmm. what i've heard from mark i think i'm really gonna gonna love it i've just gone deep with what i had and what i have mm -hmm. and look for me going from playing polyphonically to um to using <laughs> mono synths that was like a huge paradigm shift for me mm -hmm. and i was you know starting to think okay well i can just play chords in my hands you know we'll do that and whatever but what if i can only pick one note at a time and it's got to be the right one and it's got to be you know important how can i do this with as few notes as possible so using the the mono and stuff i actually really enjoy doing that because it's a different it makes my brain work differently mm -hmm. um but i i do like to sit down and just and just play like when i was on the new oberheim i mean i really didn't want to get off it someone was like excuse me ma'am <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. so yeah so so that happened <laughs> yeah well it's, it's like we were saying when we were talking about the the sem and the obe and why would you want one if you've got the other and it is that you know the fact you know, a monophonic synthesizer draws something out of you that's different to that when you're using a poly and vice yeah. versa and you know by restricting yourself to that sem you're going to get something different than you would because with the OBE, you're probably going to think, well, I'll start off with one of them, and then you'll start, you know, messing around, adding another one, adding another, and then you're in a different place to where you would have been maybe with with the, the mono. Yeah, the monos. I mean, it reminds me of of Bach. You know, like the mm. Bach inventions. You oh, you have a certain note, then you have another note within relationship to that note, and you're not playing at you know superfluous notes at all. It's like mathematically. Uh, locked in and mm. so i remember somebody pointing out you know oh, bach is the greatest composer intellectual of all time anybody can say something with a lot of notes but how can you say the truth with only a few notes mm. and so when i learned to play the mono sense i challenged myself to that not to necessarily do something like bach but to only use like the most important notes and to figure out the relationships that you know that make make the difference you know all fifths people are like eh. you know and i know why because you know a third or a major or minor sixth. i mean those have a better richer sound and of course there's mm -hmm. you know a reason to play any note at any time sometimes but i've learned that just and the certain harmonics that are that are created like be, between the notes i'm just really into learning that because remember like i didn't know anything about sound i just played a piano and like the yeah. more i learned about sound it's like it's like i was blind or i saw maybe i should say i saw in black and white and then one day i started to see like there was a tone in something and and it, there i was learning to see red and it took me a long time to see red and anyway like every day it seems like that i really make music i'm noticing more and more of like the subtle nuance mm. and i mean it's so easy to get lost in that so this is my challenge is there is a very uh there's a balance between the big picture like as a songwriter or a channeler or whatever bringing in the energy the big picture there's a balance between that and and the sound because i mean you know you get the sound right you don't mm. really need a whole lot but like which way do you lean you know what does the song want to be so i could tweak all day and maybe not pick something out so i have had to learn to be like eh, okay it's good enough you know do yeah. do something there but i'm always like hearing things in the sound and going oh but if only i could 
adjust that particular thing? How do I get that? So, yeah, yeah it's yeah. balance. Yeah, absolutely, everything. Um, any other questions from you guys at all? You got anything you want to throw at Christine? But I've got one. I've got one more from Go Mr. On. Wiggly that I was going to throw in. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, this is this is this really one. deep, serious question. So Mr. Wiggly is a guy called Dominic Hawken, who's an exceptional musician, songwriter, has his own show on the Sundays. I'm sure you'll go and have a look at those because they're a lot of fun. His daughter has just got a puppy. Therefore, he's been relegated to uh, the lounge and he wants to know your tips for not getting a bad back when sleeping on the couch. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> So I have a Mario Bellini Camelione sofa. It's a modular, so we're going to talk about modular oh. now. Oh, so, you got a modular right, sofa! Right, wow. Right, right. Yeah. Modular since I have a modular sofa. And Bedless it, jam. It, it, yeah. It comes together with pair of ears, and so in the in my sofa, between each module, there is a. Oh, I tend to just stuff the hole, and it all works out. <laughs> I've heard that somewhere. I've before. heard that before as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. There you go. I hope that's answered the question, Dom. Um, stuff the hole, and it all works out. There's a right. show title. Yeah, ever, ever yeah. yeah. that or a cool. song title. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. There's your next song is "Stuff the Hole," and it all work out. Uh, Wagyu was just saying, and I don't want to tempt fate here. Um, oh but when you get that hands on the poly brute, he's going to say, you're going to set it up in the garden and the sinkhole will open up and swallow it. <laughs> um, after, yeah. So, you know, you've had lightning, you've had wildfires. Now you'll have sinkholes. We're going to live stream. Oh, cool. And Make your right to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Absolutely. Um, well, I think that's, uh, yeah, we just kind of just run over time there. I think that's, that's a show as they say. Um, Christine, it's been an absolute blast to have you on. Thank you ever so much for coming on. Thank you. Uh, really, Thanks really enjoyed it. And you must yeah, come on again you know. soon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, well, I was nervous, actually, when we started. And now this is just so funny. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. yeah. It's, Next I time you might. I didn't really opinions I had either. <laughs> Next time you come on, me and Kent might have actually researched some stuff and we can talk properly about talk it. Talk properly about it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought we'd just carry on like normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why not? Oh. Oh, look at little Noah's tied on your lap there. Look, Kent. Oh, oh bless no, him. Uh, look at him. He baked himself today, didn't you, mate? I bet, yeah. It was a hot we day. We needed today. some pastry. <laughs> um, before we go, let me just share with everyone uh, where you can find uh, Christine's uh, music and video output. So, her, uh, and all the links yeah. are below in uh, the, the video description. So, please do go and check out and subscribe to the YouTube channel here, which is Magic Powers. And there's lots and lots of content on there for you to go through. Lots of great pieces of music, lots of fun videos, too. Um, if you also want to then go to her website, which is wakeupdreamland.com. Uh, it's all there. You can join the mailing list and uh, partake in uh, the, uh, the content there. Um, there's also a Facebook page as well, Wake Up Dreamland, um, which is all there. Let me just get rid of that there. So there you go. Uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> that was me, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... Of course, there's a Bandcamp page as well, which is oh brilliant. My I love Bandcamp. God, nobody's supposed to see that. Okay. Oh. This is, oh. So that was like private. <laughs> or I was just the only available for me to oh. hear because those were like a bunch of my mixes that were, weren't good enough, right? And when everything burned up, I'm like, oh, I did have that, you know, that page where I was uploading my demos to that was nobody it was not in public view it was all private in order to get it off i had to fucking buy it from myself you know no in order to do that i had to make it public and so i did that and i was downloading things i'm like oh no nobody's, nobody's ever gonna find this but i mean obviously you're not the first person to find that so yeah <laughs> so can, can we talk i mean do you want it publicizing or you're totally allowed to i won't stop. okay I won't stop <laughs> <laughs> well if you want to go it is magicpowers.bandcamp.com uh, uh there again there's there's a ton of content on there so please go and have a listen uh it's it's good good stuff um christine once again thank you ever so much for coming thank on it's been, a, a, been an absolute pleasure and a delight time. cool and say so we'll, we'll we'll have you back on any time you want to come on just let us know and um really, you guys yeah. have a great day Woo yeah 
<laughs> and you um so what have we got planned anything coming up ben this weekend any gigs uh i've got a, a i'm playing bingham festival tomorrow. bingham festival Aye. where's that uh, don't say bingham it's near nottingham and oh okay so you're coming uh, uh, you're coming further south yeah and we're on about seven o'clock i think okay. i don't so, know very much about it but i i just turn up and just get on turn stage. up Turn the computer on, <laughs> press play, sit back, put your feet yeah, up, yeah. have a beer. Yeah. Bingham Festival, there you go. You can go see Electromantics uh, from 7pm. Yeah. Mm. Bingham Festival, there you go. Yes. Mr. Spong, your weekend is comprising... Oh, I heard my kids. Do you want to wave hi to well, my kids? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Go ahead. Knock that yes. boogler yes. over. Oh. Come here. Oh, they're outside. They, they will do Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> You'll meet them next time. Okay. <laughs> Ken, uh, anything uh, special for your weekend? Uh, I am... Tuning the Mustang, okay, because it's as lumpy as hell. Uh, I've got a mini Moog. I've got a sand down. Okay, uh, MIDI kit into a Jupiter Eight. Uh, well, there was something else. It was, oh, Profit VS and uh, <laughs> two CS eighties. So nothing. Lovely. Hi guys. Hello girls. These are my identical twin daughters. I was going to say Isabella. <gasps> Hello. Wow, identical twins. Oh, identical twins. shy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're, they're adorable. <laughs> adorable. Even Noah's run off. Yeah. <laughs> He's gone. Okay, we're about to be dead. I'm in place. Yeah. So, um, anything fun coming up in your weekend, Christine? Um. Boy, I mean, just. I'm going to relax. I'm going to go to a barbecue. And oh, so cool. like I've, I've had like all sorts of work and stuff that I've been having to get done. And honestly, psychologically preparing for this, <laughs> took up a bit of bandwidth. I'm like, Oh my God, people are going to watch it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, now tomorrow I'm going to go to a barbecue. I'm going to sit in the pool, I'm gonna nice. eat some, you know, barbecue food and just do nothing. Good. That's the Good best move. Way to do that. <laughs> I'm off to see ABBA on Sunday. I'm going to that that whole ABBA voyage thing, which I'm, nice. I'm, I'm actually kind of quite excited about. Yeah, um, I know it's like a it's like a virtual thing, but there's, there's a live band and everything they do. It's a 90 minute show. I'm looking forward to that. I think that's so yeah, mm, off down to London, though. land and yeah. town again. Um, yeah, that's my weekend. Um, of course, if you are uh, not going anywhere this weekend and you're watching YouTube channels uh, full of synth nerdiness, then of course you've got Ranzi tomorrow. Uh, yeah. a rough, I think around 1 p.m. UK time. Um, so he's on. And then Sunday you've got Jamie. And then you've got Dom uh, on Sunday evening. And then of course Nick on a Wednesday. Um, I don't know if Gaz is doing anything. I saw Gaz was playing with Steve Davis in a pub somewhere in Birmingham the other night, which looked quite Snooker. cool. No, yeah, it's Steve Davis snooker, but they're actually yeah. playing modular. Oh they, were, they, oh, they weren't playing snooker. No, they oh, weren't right, playing. No, they're they're playing yeah. modular. Yeah, um, yeah. But anyway, there you go. That's um, that's everything from us. We'll be back same time, same place next week. And next week, oh, I almost forgot about this. How could I? We have got an absolute belter of a show for you. So we have got not only um, uh, one of the rarest synthesizers in the world uh, being demonstrated to us live. But we've also got um, the guy who restored it, the guy who owns it, and the guy that's probably one of the best-known people to play it on the show next week. And that is the Yamaha VP1 Special with our friends Dr. Manny Fernandez, Reinhold Heil, and the great Scott Kinsey as well. All of those people and that instrument, which is, say, it's one of the rarest instruments in the world... Uh, never went into full commercial production. Only prototypes have, uh, made it out, and I think the, the the estimation is between nine and fifteen of these things ever crept out. Um, but there's a whole story behind this this one synthesizer, which is incredible. It's an acoustic modelling synthesizer that uses a form of modelling that is not used anywhere else really. Um, and Manny has been restoring this on behalf of the owner Reinhold. And Scott is well known for, for playing this and many other great things, of course. Um, so we've got all of these gentlemen. Massive thank you to Manny for uh, arranging all of this for us. And, uh, yeah, really looking forward to that next week. I'm a huge VP1 fan. I'll never get to see one in, in the flesh. So this is about as good as it will get. So um, join us next week, same time, same place, 7 p.m. UK time, 2 p.m. on the East Coast, 11 a.m. on the West. 
and yeah we'll go for all of that um gentlemen ladies it's been an absolute pleasure fantastic have a great weekend um everyone else we will see you all next uh, week take care and have a fantastic weekend everyone bye-bye, Bye. Bye. Bye.